I have coffee. So we are set. I want to thank the audience first for being here, I mean. So I say thank you very much for being here. I think that this is one of the most nicest conversation that we ever did uh, because it's first time that we have the opportunity to bring in front of the camera and talk with um, somebody who is leading the the very the biggest i think region of our company you will tell uh, us all about it all about it is a vice president from region six from uh, a large health and beauty and i think it counts how many countries i'm, I'm not sure seven uh Honestly, honestly, I think, yeah, well, hi, everyone. Very good to be seeing you, but as Kevin, this is especially you, you know. <laughs> uh, this should be an interesting hour or so of thoughts and, uh, you know, intellectual challenges, I, I presume. Uh, I think there are nine countries, and yes, geographically, it is the largest because we are going all the way from Beringsea, which yeah. apparently is very far away, uh, down, to, uh, down to Mediterranean, yes. So, you know. There is some space, okay? There is some space. We are very happy to have you here, Sebastian. Uh, we would like to to speak about very interesting things that we never have the chance to speak with another person from your perspective, your title, I mean. And uh, this is why we appreciate the fact that we are here with us. And let's go down to the conversation. Yes, let's, start. let's start. Let's uh, start. First of all, can you please give us the, the, the exact title? Of, the, the full, yes, yes. the full <laughs> title. <laughs> right. So, well, uh, I believe that that would be regional vice president. Okay. And uh, yes, uh, managing this, uh, this new exciting region for a number of years now. Uh, but yeah, it's regional vice president. And give us a little bit of context, meaning where are you coming from? How you, you, you met Elar? Hmm. How, how far back do you want me to go? You know, I'm an old man, so I'm comfortable. <laughs> we have time. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Well, you know, let, let's uh, let's start like this. So I, I was uh, lucky enough that through my academic uh, background, you know, I, I am an undergraduate law and then uh, marine engineering, and finally uh, did business administration, which naturally with the first job was in journalism. Uh, but then, uh, you know, this is very early 90s. I, I, I was born and brought in Transylvania, Romania, and you know, very exciting times, uh, not living there for the last 20 years, as for the last 25 years, I mean, various roles of in uh, general management um, across, I, I've actually lost count on how many countries did I live in. And but I think I left, uh, I've been living in about 10 countries over the last uh, 20 odd years and uh, quite a few places uh, mm -hmm. in between. I, I would imagine uh, once, I'm, I, once I counted that, Again, I don't try to take it with any lack of modesty, but I think I was managing um, something like 30 odd countries in between uh, Asia and Europe. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoyed um, an exciting and quite dynamic career in the industry. And uh, at some point, I wanted a bit of a sabbatical, and that was uh, eight years ago. And as soon as I started my sabbatical, uh, uh, the, you know, the, one of the key uh, uh, people in Ela uh, at the time, but which were turned to be the CEO uh, soon after, uh, approached me and, uh, you know, we enter a conversation as people do. And uh, I started studying Ela, and I believed, uh, as I believe now, that it's such a powerful force for good. And at the time, I think uh, what I had to bring to the table, which is quite a bit of strategy and consumer mindset up and analytics and understanding, uh, you know, understanding the stage, understanding, uh, yes, all the, the smoke and mirrors, but rather putting reason behind the motion. So, uh, and then soon after I fell in love with LR and I joined, uh, uh, I joined Apple uh, in 2013. So it would be now seven years since I am privileged uh, enough to, to be managing and working with great wonderful people such uh, such as the two of you two two of my absolute favorite leaders that i have had a, had a chance over the 20 odd years to uh, to be working with thank you very much thank you so yes i remember i think we met first time in romania right it would be seven years uh, yes. in, uh, in exactly one month from now i remember that 
it was very interesting the, the, at that time the, the situation in Romania trying to stabilize everything not to lose uh, business and uh, try to you know motivate people and uh, very very hard times but thank god yeah. everything now is is growing yeah that was As it, you know i had i had a few 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 times in my life when stepping into a new business i i got a bit of a tear and uh, stepping into the romanian business i definitely got a tear because and it's not big in any sort of way uh, because i i grew up uh, in that place but simply because understanding again feeling as i said a number of times firsthand the power of non action okay and i believe romania was such a such an example of the power of non action of a management group uh, that has such a horrible uh, impact you know very many people they are looking wrong decision wrong decision wrong action but i tell you what i take any day of the week and twice on sunday action even though for as long as it's well motivated well intended over non action okay because non action it's 100% guaranteed will always have a negative result okay so mm-hmm. if, even if you're looking for pure math action will still get you some place hmm? so this has been uh, a year i will not you use mean to 20. yes 220 okay. I, I, i will not <laughs> use an adjective i will ask you to describe 220 in three words I can describe the uh, uh, 2020 in two words. Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> It's really a complicated, a very, very complicated situation. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I generally believe this is one of those years that will stay in memory for everyone. I think for us, will stay in memory for multiple reasons, and not all of them bad. And quite, uh, quite, <laughs> quite the opposite. Uh, in a certain strange uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, turn of fate. Hmm? That's where uh, my next question is. You are the head of some of mega markets of the company, uh, as well as some mega networks. I would like you to give us an overview of the lessons taught. I don't know if they were learned, but definitely they were taught. Uh, during this COVID year in terms of um, quick reflex and resilience? And of course, anything else you would like to add to this? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that, I mean, this question I can answer in about six hours because I've been <laughs> practicing for, for the last uh, eight, nine months. But it's a great question, Paris Kevin. Um, one first observation. At uh, the very beginning of the crisis, I quoted uh, 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 one of the uh, biggest industrialists ever um, that said, this is too, too big of a crisis to go down to waste. But I think we have won because already in March, instead of uh, playing the waiting game, which again, waiting game, it's a non-action. And I know some teams, some countries, uh, many businesses for that matter, outside of Ella, they just play the waiting game. Okay, let's, you know, All let's three, see. Let's see wait how, and see how it will goes. Yeah, exactly. And no, and rather, you know, defiance is fantastic, but defiance by non-action will terminate you. You say, oh, this will pass. Yeah, sure. And we once it passes, we're gonna get back to normal. The reality mm-hmm. is that to a new normal. This yeah. year, it's a new normal, and everybody needs to find what normal is. Okay, but uh, but the life as as of February 2020, I can guarantee everyone will never ever ever be the same. The life has changed globally uh, beyond recognition, and I'm not talking about the crisis. But I think people learned, and some people learned, some people didn't. That uh, this is one of those moments in life that you you adapt or you perish, and uh, and you you know you non-act. <laughs> Uh, at your own peril, quite frankly. So what I did observe then, markets and businesses that were had very strong fundamentals and coming with momentum, in, with energy, they turned this into a platform of growth. Markets and, uh, um, and networks that came in with the negative momentum, they found it incredibly complicated 
uh, to turn it around for basically the same reason why they were unprepared to begin with because the fundamentals were not there so i find people that were good got better uh people that were bad got worse i think it's almost sinister to say this uh, but that's a reality of life and i want to take this learning outside you know i i call this and i think my team knows that at the very beginning we were not hesitant and i think on on uh, march 10 i call this uh, uh, my leadership team i call that this is the the work cabinet and i you know, might sound overly dramatic, but I think that was the right attitude at the time. You treat this as war. And then, you know, I put our role, first and foremost, is to protect the network. You know, if you protect the network, okay, you will find a way to go through. Uh, I think many, you know, I like uh, Richard Branson of uh, Virgin fame because his attitude uh, in terms of how to prioritize uh, the uh, how I, it should, the key stakeholders, yeah. So you talk about you talk about obviously investors. So you talk about customers, and you talk about your own employees. And he's the only mega business or mega business leader that, in my opinion, in my I share his opinion rather, uh, that he has the priority right. Employees always come first. Okay. So this way you apply the same principle. My network comes first. Okay. And uh, then, of course, is the customers. And if you get these two right, the investors, you know, the stakeholders are always going to be happy. Try to do it the other way around. You're going to be hurting one of these two. And then, quite frankly, that's game over. Um, another thing I said at the very beginning is that you're going to see people in their true colors. You're going to see leaders now being challenged. Yes, I was a kid. Uh, I was actually in my first job management role and that's more than 20 years ago. And a, a colleague of mine, she was going through, uh, you know, high to height. And I was talking with my first mentor, my boss at the time, and a great mentor of mine, and said, just wait, because you have already been through a crisis, and I know what you are made of. Let's see when her goes through a crisis, because everybody will go through a crisis, and then you're going to see what she's made of. Because yeah. in times of peace and glory, Everybody, Everything is, uh, everybody's is, king on their own nice. mm. How are you going to be when you're under attack? That's when you're going to show mantle. That's when you're going to show leadership or you're going to uh, gonna uh, pass away. People inability to read the momentum, uh, to read the fact that this could be just as well a blessing in disguise. Okay, Take me for, uh, for instance. If somebody would ask me in January, can you do an event? online i would have put i would have said are you out of your mind this is part and parcel of our business just no chance i'm gonna have a two three thousand people event online you know what eight months later i stand corrected yes you can is it as good hell no is it effective hell no is it important absolutely yes so you can learn to do things. Even my own management processes have changed. Uh, before, uh, I was going from one market. Uh, I was in, in uh, one or two countries every single week. It's important. Of course, it's important. Is it the only way? I learn now, no, it's not the only way. So I think a mixture now of meetings such as, you know, a year ago, we did not, look at us. A year ago, we did not even imagine, one, that we need such a thing, two, yeah. that we will do it. We, and we had we sat in meetings, uh, the three of us, uh, for tons of hours. How many times did we think to record it? Precisely zero times. <laughs> right? Because the idea of we can always have a speech in front of a group of people. You know, but you see, sir, we started seeing, but I, I'm afraid that very many people just don't see even the need to change. And this is my reflection. I go into a successful country and I'm having a business review or I'm having a training or a lecture and people are going to say, yes, the situation is tough, but let's not focus about that. How about we do this, this and that? I go in a market where the results are not good and without, actually, it, luckily enough, we, we are very blessed, you know, uh, with that because we don't have many such situations, but, but you will see within first five minutes why the, that market is not good because 
the respective leaders, the leadership of that market starts pointing out at an external factors. The winning markets are pointing out what we could manage. Okay? We can manage the crisis. We can manage the lockdown. We can't ma manage a curfew after hours. We can't. We can't change that. So how do we manage with, the, with this context? And this is to me, a, it's pretty obvious. Yes, denial versus acceptance as a starting point, determines absolutely everything after. You touch a very sensitive point, which I call uh, the relearning era of the things. Uh, we have to be, I call it rebound from basketball, you know, yeah. to have very fast re rebound, to get the message, and very, very fast to be able to adjust what is needed. You know, I'm sitting in front of a microphone now, and I had no idea three months uh, ago, what this is. It's very important, I think, the, the mentality of learning. Even if you are 10, 15, or 20 years in a business, I, I'm not speaking about uh, LR only. Do you remember, I think you would remember, one of my desperate focuses, I think we were having a meeting in Athens, when I, I, I said, you know, uh, I, I have my daughter, she's turning 13 in spring, and said, I will not give up till we will manage across these companies, the market, to, to explain what are we doing for a living so that my daughter understands in full. Yes, yes, what I'm yes. trying to say by this, and you are right, there is a process of learning. That's easy. Uh, the process of unlearning, that where I find it terribly complicated. One of my favorite books, and uh, I suggest you know to, to, to your friends here uh, that are watching this because they have nothing better to do uh, uh, to, to read is a book called "What Got You Here Ain't Gonna Ain't Gonna Get You There." Okay, now that's brilliant because if you start to think about it, most of us, I said earlier, I too, as you, as two of you are, we are in a many ways prisoner of our own success. So. How can you learn continuously to be humble? And uh, uh, Mr. Jobs, rest in peace. You remember his uh, acceptance speech where he said, stay foolish, stay hungry. It's maybe at the time you understand, but this stay foolish. What it means, stay humble, okay? Never, ever, ever believe for a second your success. Enjoy it with humility because you are not, no one is going to learn from a point of arrogance. That's another learning I'm getting. You can't learn from a point of arrogance. You, you might know this, uh, this story when there is this uh, scholar, yes, Western scholar that goes to India, goes to a, to a sage, to a guru, as I know everything about everything. Now I come to you to also learn what you need to do. To which the, uh, the scholar just took his glass, didn't say a word, he started put, put, putting water, filling it over, spilling it over, and at some point the scholar asks, what are you doing? Well, that's exactly what you asked me to do. You, if you come, that you know everything, whatever I put over will spill over. No, no space. Exactly, so humility. And in, moment, in challenging moments like this, I, this saddens me most when I see good people that simply do not, you know, do not accept the situation and like me, I was talking with one of my country managers. I said, all I'm doing these days, these nights, I'm thinking not what I know. I'm thinking, what don't I know? And what can I help my teams? How can I help to innovate? I'm coming with ideas for different reasons. But you, you can't come with an idea from arrogance. Because if you come from, with an idea from knowledge, will be always a product of that idea. In, in the same fashion that you cannot fix a problem, from the same level that you have created the problem. So you need to look from a different angle. That angle is humility. I think this year shows, <laughs> every time it shows, but this year it perhaps highlights that leadership is humility and you, you cannot lead from a position of arrogance. Again, to, to your brilliant question, how can you unlearn if you are not humble? How can you let your monkeys uh, 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 in the back? How you can drop your luggage? And there is another thing, uh, Zizi, that you know um, uh, definitely best, uh, or one of the best around, and that is communication 
particularly over social media. We are born, okay, Paraskevich is young, but the two of us, we are born in the in church, yes, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's our church. That church it doesn't exist anymore. Frankly, I think it didn't exist for a very long time already. We just failed to recognize it, yes. But what happens? Once we get people in the room, we have their time. We have their attention. Because honestly, I mean, just think in a, in a, in a material way. We close the doors. We own the room, yes. We close the doors. And if somebody stands up to leave, you know, you feel bad. But when you are in front of this, there are no emotions or feeling bad about it. If people, people switch off, that's it. If you are not good, we, you, they switch off from you in precisely 2.3 seconds, which is about the span that people have. Now, talking to unlearning, how can we simplify our message, whatever our message in, in a business context or another, that normally would be having hour and a half, how can you put it in 10 minutes? Bloody difficult. But this work we have done, uh, speaking of Romania, you know, I took that team uh, and you, I think you know that we started putting the script together from the elevator talk. What is this company? What is the model? But you start with the two minutes. Anyone can talk for five hours. Who can talk for two minutes to tell what others can uh, talk in five hours? Now, that, that's the essence. So unlearning and learning how to unlearning Old fashioned, the, let's say. The cabbage and learning how to be effective and simplify to essence, to bare essence. You know, that I find every single um, business networker should be looking at. And very many are succeeding. Unfortunately, many more are still way into the learning curve. Mm -hmm. Since you uh, communicate with people of uh, different cultures and um, mindsets. Could you give us top three characteristics for uh, of someone who succeeds in our business? And I'm not talking only uh, about leaders, but uh, also about someone who starts today with our, in our business, uh, has no prior experience, and manages to reach a good level within a short period of time. Mm. I'm going to try to, to break that in two questions because I think the qualities of leadership are, are, are obviously um, the same to an extent with a beginner, mm -hmm. but not in full. So let, let's try to break that in two. I think in leadership, I already said, to me, in moments like this, got to be resolved, Mm -hmm. got to be humility and I can't emphasize enough humility you know but resolve it got to come from your stomach you know that I will never surrender I think you you know a conversation we had a couple of weeks ago it's not about winning I mean of course it's about winning but it's finally not about winning it's about giving it a fight mm -hmm. you know I think the world uh, the world remembers you know I, I have Tons of props here in in my in my house. There you go. The world remember this uh, this helmet, yes. Yeah. They are not remember because they won. Because as my history uh, serves me, they didn't. But the world remembers uh, the Spartans because they gave it a fight. Okay. And the fight in itself is the win. People who don't even give it a fight, they don't give themselves a chance to succeed. So that result, that drive. I think you remember this when I told you that in spring, after this crisis started, I think I had 10 straight weeks without the weekend, and I'm talking about 12 hours a day of continuous work. Um, and not because I wanted to, you know, because that was the need of the day. You know, it, that was the need, and this is how we led the, led the, the businesses. So, the, and you need to adapt. And, once you have a strong playbook, but you need to change that playbook 10 times, uh, 10 times a week, it takes time. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Exactly. So resolve, you got to have resolve in moments like this. If you give up, that's it. There, there is nothing else to continue. Humility to accept the situation. Uh, you, you know the Irish, uh, Irish saying, yes, uh, uh, give me the wisdom uh, to, or rather, no, uh, give me the inspiration to change what I must or what I can, give me the humility 
uh, uh, to accept what I come and give me the wisdom to know the difference in between the two. Uh, but you got to act, you got to come from, from a level of conviction, so resolve, humility, and I would say compassion, mm -hmm. compassion, uh, because as a leader, ultimately, you are responsible for not only for the numbers, not for your bottom line, the top line, but particularly in our line of work. You are responsible, even if in little way, I think sometimes in more than a little way, you are responsible for the lives of so, so many. So your decisions, they impact directly thousands and tens of thousands of families because, you know, people depend on their, you know, making ends meet or sometimes making a great life on your decisions. So that sense of compassion, yes, how to how to apply the rules and to uh, create new, new rules, and at the same time understanding how to help people with words and deeds to move through this. So I guess these three. What as for, I mean, there would be another million uh, uh, things to that, but- uh, The but major but three, just three, just the yes, major yes. three. And um, if I may um, make a parenthesis here, we've seen all, the th uh, all these three, in our uh, team, in the people who made the extra mile and uh, had successes during this year, these were the, the characteristics that the details that made uh, the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in moments of crisis, Paraskevi, this is a little bit like it's birth through fire. There is very little gray area. Mm -hmm. You know, there is very, because there is no room to maneuver, you know, uh, you, you, this is a little bit like you swim or you die, you, you, you know, you're going to learn to swim or you are not going to learn to swim. There are, <laughs> there There's are, no uh, yeah. exactly. Yes, it's black and white, no gray. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And speaking of the three of us that we are matching quite nicely, speaking of black and white, um, but, uh, but, but indeed, you know, um, it really highlights the character of you as a human, as a professional, and as a leader. And whichever, it, it, you know, there is the saying money, money change. I, I don't know if money change uh, changes people, but for sure, in my experience, money shows the true character of one person. Okay, it, it really shows that. Yeah. To, to your second point, how could someone that starts today? Um, succeed. Frankly, I don't think there is a difference if you start today or you started 20 years ago or you started, uh, you know, you will start 10 years from now because, because of two basic things. The mechanics of human psychology, they do not change uh, over crisis. The reaction change, but the very mechanics, they don't change. You know, the, the muscle of motivational scale doesn't change. That's it. That, that is that. This is how we as humans are being made. So if you have a strong goal of why do you do this? I see many people a little bit like headless chicken running here, running there, running. You know, they do a lot of effort going nowhere. Um, but if you know why you want to do this, you will succeed. That, that's kind of like the first the first fire, this goal, you know, goal to me is energy. And I heard you, you know, they wanted to be motivated. To me, I think many managers, particularly many, many people, uh, um, you know, in the teams, they are looking to be motivated. And I'm like, that's nonsense. You, you look for inspiration, maybe, but the motivation, it's fundamentally something that it is within you. Anyone else, you know, I say, I'm not in the business to inspire people, that's to, to, to motivate people. I'm in the business of managing, of strategizing, of creating concepts, and as a leader in our line of business to inspire. Motivation is with you. If you're motivated to, to do that, you will do it. If you, if you are not, then no one, on planet Earth is going to come and sprinkle motivation, golden dust on your head. You have it or you don't have it. So it says from the goal. 
So if you have a strong goal, you will figure out. And as you said, Pascal, I think we are very blessed to have so many teams uh, in our region that they learn and they learn quickly on their feet on how to manage online. And that's why I think we have extraordinary powerful stories of growth. Let's not forget that this year will be us as a company will be by far our best year ever. And uh, uh, I think 90% of the geographies, the markets are going to have their best year ever. I mean, it's extraordinary, but it really shows the resilience. Actually it shows two things. It shows how extraordinary our business model is, okay? Uh, because this balance that I think you heard me talking so many times, the perfect balance in between what we have to offer to a customer and what we have to offer to a business partner, I believe it's absolutely ideal, which is why March was, a, you know, talking about March was a challenging month, but was also one of the best uh, sales months because you have the right product, yes? Uh, and then May, people need money, guess what? We have that too. So now we put stra strategies of how to, to do customer acquisition and then how within that to do also, uh, to, to set up a new path for, for business builders, how to, to expand the customer platform, the customer base, yeah? So uh, I think, so we are very blessed to have an unbelievably powerful business model. Secondly, because of the resilience and personal efforts and personal sacrifices, you know, I have so many country general managers that I, I am speechless to think, but even, even yesterday, you know, one of them finishes uh, our normal work, our management work, and then at six in the evening, she goes to the warehouse because one of our employees uh, is sick uh, and she needs to fill in. And she fills in till 10, 11 in the evening, you know, and I have so many examples like this. Uh, that to me, it's totally inspirational. You know, your kids, your kids are learning, uh, are doing their online school uh, in your office whilst you are, you are working. We all adapt uh, and those who don't adapt, well, they don't, but. Mainly, I believe that people need somebody to remind them why they started. And this is. The, the main reason they lose their focus and uh, see this fog in, in, in front of them because through everyday routine, through everyday problems, micro problems and everything, they forget why, why they are in the business. And the biggest motivation I think for the people is to just to do a reminder, something like this. Mm -hmm. And okay, I skip this part because... Oh, yeah. Uh, just hold your thoughts, Zizi, for a yes, second. Yes. Funny you should say that. You know, we were talking earlier about the market uh, before we uh, we went uh, recording. And what I'm doing there now, and I'm meeting, I think, over the last several weeks, hundreds of leaders there. And that's exactly what I'm doing there. What You need to remind yourself, good people, why in the first place you started doing this? Because if you have lost that, then you lost everything. No technique is enough to, to drive you anywhere if you lose this. Yes, that, that's you know, it. When you lose this part, then you start asking about techniques. <laughs> you know, you are, you are you are you are basically becoming a, a muppet in a certain way. Yes, you or, or rather a better example. You are a leaf in the wind. You know the falling leaves. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wherever the wind will blow you, you know. But but you lost your your direction. You lost your compass. You lost your you lost your route. Yes. And the root to me sits into your goal. Yes. So goal. And then you highlight that and you put what defines you as a human, your, your moral and ethical values. Yes. But you got to have a goal. And to your point, it's a brilliant point you, you bring. If you lost your goal, don't expect to be motivated. You know, so I, I think our role as leaders is to try to inspire people to do a bit of a soul searching. It's like, what are you doing this for? Do you still remember? Because yeah. if you remember, I think we're going to help you find a way to unlearn and learn new things. Hmm? My next question is coming and was inspired from a conversation, very fast conversation that we did before. I don't know how many months uh, during a dinner that we had. And uh, we were talking about leadership, leaders from the network part, I mean, 
and uh, the different challenges they face when they need to grow their organization. Mm -hmm. So we have some partners that are growing, they became leaders, and then they have to move to the highest levels of leadership, of, of the titles, let's say. From your perspective, what do you think are the challenges they face? In, in that conversation, fast conversation, you told me, and I like it very much, that most of the leaders that are able to grow, they struggle with the communication and balance of the messages and react, reaction with other leaders in the team. So the, do you remember this? We speak about what is happening in an organization where you are not the king, the only, the only one king, let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some princes are starting to show up and you have to manage and balance different characters, different, you know. Egos. Egos, yes. So give us your, your thoughts on this, please. If people have reached a level of, I mean, there is this saying that everyone, everyone will eventually, all of us will reach eventually our own personal level of incompetence. And I think that's true. Um, or at least it's true to an extent. If you have the deeper call to go beyond that, then you're going to move outside of your incompetence and you're going to turn it into a skill. Yes, exactly to your point, Zizi. Yes, let's say we are decent public speakers, but we didn't dream to uh, to be, you know, doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of what is it, more than that of of online content as you and I we did uh, during this year alone. Okay, uh, because it wasn't our thing. But finally, you understand. Okay, this is the need of the day. You learn why? Because we have a very clear goal. Why we are doing this? And we also understand the responsibility of our respective roles. Mm -hmm. You know, in the in the words of the philosopher Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Yes. So, uh, and I think some people reach a level of satisfaction. Now, and they're going to say, yes, I want to grow. But you can see through every single sentence that they are saying that they don't because their goal, the fuel, ran out. Remember, goal, it's fuel. Once the, you run out of fuel, you can say, I want to go farther, but you have no energy and you are happy in that place. Why would I learn new skills? You know, if I decided to be already an old dog, because be, being an old dog, in our case, it's a personal decision. Yes, I decided to be an old dog, therefore I can't learn new tricks. And then you're going to start in any explanation using your wits and wisdoms of ana analyzing every single piece of outside universe. And guess what? You're going to be right. I, I, I'm not sure of this, but I think it was uh, Mr. Ford. I, I'm not sure of that. So you, you will find it. But uh, I think the saying goes like, if you think you can do it, or you think you can't do it, yeah. you're right. It, it's a choice, yes? So I don't think it's even about engaging with, uh, with new stars, young stars, okay? You have reached a point of, I'm okay. And I think we, as, uh, uh, you know, uh, you as a top leader, myself in my, you know, organizational leadership role that I find, we need to accept that that's part and parcel of the game. You know, if some people chose, this is where I am. And you try and you try, like, this is where I am. And you see in between the words, I say, I'm fine. Leave me alone. And I'm like, I support you to stay the way you are, but I want to grow. So I'm going to look at the next person who is going to generate this growth. It doesn't mean I love you any less. And it doesn't mean that I'm not respecting all the journey I have had with you for all this time. It means that I respect your position and I respect my goal, say that that is growth. 
So you see, there is no conflict. Unfortunately, many people treat this as a conflict. You forgot about me. No, no, I didn't forget about you. You forgot about you. And I, I am respecting your decision. But now I'm working with these kids because you know what? They are foolish and they are hungry. So you see, it's not, it's not even a paradox to me. It's no. just treating everybody with the respect they command. It was a discussion we had early this morning on our kitchen table. <laughs> it's the decision you make and you make it every day to either include yourself or exclude yourself from growth, from progress, from becoming more. Because you communicate with a lot of leaders from different cultures, different, different countries, Europe, uh, Turkey, uh, Russia, uh, I don't know. Is what kind of difficulties that you face when you communicate with them? Mediterranean temperament. Of course. <laughs> oh no, that's that's the part that I love most. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I belong to this part of the world. I belong to them, to the passionate part of the world. Let's put it like this, okay? Um, I, I enjoy. It. I think it gives it gives a lot of spice and color. Uh, to something that otherwise would be a very dull yet successful process. I, I love it. Not not a problem with me. Um, what frustrates me, I think, it's frustration. Yes, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. inability. The exactly the same thing. Unwillingness of the people to accept today for what it is, and trying to color the reality in with paints that are more favorable for that uh, respective person. I'm like. My friend, when I'm telling you you make a mistake, I'm not telling you to beat you down. I'm telling you to bring awareness to your situation and therefore to, to open a, a dialogue, a dialogue of what can I do for you? Because you, you know uh, me, Pascal, is this it? For me, your success is my success. This is how I live by your success, it's my success. I'm a steward of this company in the sense that I'm protecting the company and I'm trying to serve uh, uh, the best uh, uh, way, the best I can, uh, all the leaders and the teams uh, in this part of the world. I also accept, well, as I said earlier, that some people just choose to say, that's it for me. That's as far as I go. Thank you very much. I am happy. So it's like, I started this, so that you are happy. So if you say that you are happy and I see that you are happy, it's a choice that I will respect. When I'm having a frustration with people that say, help me. It's like, okay, let's have a talk. And then you know the saying uh, that uh, for every single um, solution I give you, you have another problem? Another problem, yes. That yes. is what kills me. <laughs> and I know, I know that the people when I offer this solution say, I did that. It's like the fact that you have did it once it doesn't mean it's a behavior. It doesn't mean it's a process. This is the process like people, is it humility? I don't know if it's humility in this particular case, just unwillingness to do what it, take, what it takes to move from that situation. Okay, so it's not even about comfort zone. It's, it's, it's a zone, it's a strange zone. It's like, help me. Here's my help, but it doesn't work. It's like, but did you do it? No, but it doesn't work. I'm like, what do you want from me? You see, and I think you, you have exactly the same experience. Um, nothing frustrates me more. Nothing frustrates me more to offer somebody a solution only for that uh, person to tell me that um, I have a problem with that solution. It's like, you have a problem. I give you the solution to the problem. How about you do that with, with respect and with integrity and really with conviction and talk to me after you have done it and tell me that it doesn't work. I'm a bit surprised, <laughs> not a bit. Uh, I'm very surprised because I, I lived this one million times in the past. Not, not only with leaders, but uh, for any level of partners. Um, and, you know, especially that category of, of people that you give them something and you say, I, I, they, they say, uh, I try this. I already do this. I do it. And I do that. And do this. I do that. I do this. I do that. 
And mm-hmm. you know that either they are not doing it because they don't understand completely what we are talking about, or they do it, but in a different way than the way you suggest them to do. So uh, it's like they try to copy paste or they think they copy paste, but the paste is wrong. It's not copy. It's not from the copy, let's say, you know, something like this. Anything multiplied with zero will be zero. And it has nothing to do with the business context. No, it no, goes no. beyond. It's a pattern of behavior. It's a mindset, I would say. Mm-hmm. You, you are 100% right, uh, Paraskevi. It's a mindset. These are people that are choosing not to make mistakes or to risk anything. Um, be- yeah, well, actually, one of my, my coaches back in the day, very beautiful thing, um, said, if you are not willing to do mistakes, nothing uh, nothing will happen. Comma, nothing at all. Mm-hmm. Nothing will happen, you know. Nothing changes if nothing changes. And I'm trying to tell people these days, guys, nothing changes if nothing changes. Yeah. You don't need to admit in front of me. Of course, People want to feel, that's why it's mentality. That's why it's a human trait. All of us, all of us as humans, we want to be loved and appreciated. Some people do this in a better way than others. You know, some people, they understand that I can get more appreciation and maybe even more self-love if I do something better. Other people say, I would refuse to accept that I need to do something different because that means in front of you and in front of your eyes, but also my eyes, it means that I am not good. Whereas to me, it's not that you are not good, it's that you do not have enough skill here. So unfortunately, here it's a choice, yes, but it's coming from the same human emotion of needing to be appreciated. What kind of skills you need, uh, you think are important for a leader in the new decade? Um, or no need for change well you you see if you're looking back at 150 years 150 years back good leaders are good leaders I can guarantee you uh, that uh, uh, that uh, Henry Ford would have been a very effective uh, uh, innovator and a great manager in today. He didn't need to do it a hundred years ago because, you know, when you read uh, the history, of, you know, psychology, psychology of leadership, over the many, I, I studied, let's say, the last 40, 50 years. Uh, and to that, I also put leadership in history to say that historic, the rulers, yes, big rulers, they have the same traits and patterns a millennia ago or today, interestingly enough. So mm-hmm. I don't think the, the general rules will change. If you have them, you have them. You know, I, I, I was successful in three different companies, okay? In over, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 countries, um, because I think the core of understanding of leadership is the same, yes? Um, is that is that kind of that affect the understanding of the environment? It doesn't matter the environment, but the, the filters, the understanding you have according to the core values of, of a leader, you mean? Sure, right? Sure, but you, you see, Zizi, um, I love doing turnarounds. It's kind of like my favorite thing within business. You know, I did startups and it's great. I did step ups and it's great, but the most fun and most intensive things you can do in a business if if you are in a in a certain leadership role like general management leadership role is to do turnarounds. I love doing turnarounds uh, for many reasons because there is a process of unlearning, there is a process of rebuilding, and somehow you see the results black and white. Sometimes as early as uh, six months, sometimes as late as a year and a half. But you see it, and the, this process. So within that, I always say you have the holy trinity of business. You know, what's your what's your sales model? What's your marketing model? What's your operations model? 
Yes. And within sales model will always be, and if you wish also with your marketing model, how, you know, the fundamental question is how to get to a customer, satisfy her in such a way that we're going to do the main two things of any FMCG. Repeat purchase and recommendation to other people. This would not change. This didn't change for for since the beginning of direct sales, which was three millennia ago. Okay, and will not change for as long as people are going to look to sell and buy product. Okay, so I don't think this will change as a question. Now, how to get to a new customer? How to retain a new customer? into an extreme, I mean, this is the most aggressive environment in terms yeah. of competitiveness I totally ever, ever had, you know, I mean, one of my favorite, favorite thing to how little the span of control, check this out. So how do you watch, how do you watch a movie Netflix in the evening? Okay. On Netflix in the evening. Well, you browse, you browse for 40 minutes. You choose something that you have already seen 15, uh, 15 times. And for the 50 minutes of, of that series playing, you're going to be on Instagram. Yes, but... <laughs> well, I'm have Netflix <laughs> <laughs> to start with. <laughs> well, you know, uh, and I, I think the question will still come to how to get to the customer, how to keep her majesty. Uh, because finally, I keep even today, uh, two hours, three hours. I, I had a session with with a group of leaders. I said there is on, only one person that spends money into entire value chain of one company, and that is exactly. her or His Majesty, the customer. Yeah. Everyone yeah. else stands to make money out of that. Of that course. is not going to change. How to get to the customer, and then of course. We have our networking, our social selling, our networking uh, model, but that is about customer expansion. Yes, um, I think this financial is not going to change. Tools will change infinitely, uh, infinitely. I'm hearing now from a couple of networks that they are using TikTok uh, for TikTok for uh, for uh, networking. I'm like, I would have not imagined that a year ago, but you know what? Right now, I think throughout this crisis, I think we learn. You need to be open to anything because you have no idea what is the next thing. You know what is crazy with TikTok? Okay, one day I was in the car mm. and with one of my friends, and I say, "Make me a video now," because it was a very nice song in the in the in the on the radio, you know. And I make a 30, 30 second uh, thirty second video, and I had. 1,000 view, 1,000 view, no, 100,000 views in yeah. this video, in TikTok, in less than one month. Yeah, and that's an unbelievable number. This is this is I suspect, uh, you know, what I think several questions. I'm talking now within our business, but I think you can extrapolate with outside our business. Our product, we believe. I don't think. Uh, we need to do anything about our product. And when I refer to product, I mean our physical product and our sales model. Yes, I think we are incredibly good. We're going to evolve. We're going to add this. We're going to take that out. But we are so powerful as this last eight months proved. Yeah. Several questions we need to answer ourselves. What's our lead generation machine? Mm -hmm. What's our conversion generation machine? Yeah. What's our reactivation and adjacent uh, 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 machine we, we get these three we are moving forward to social selling because two of the three factors that you mentioned is the core of so social selling which is something we are standing now for i don't know two years mm -hmm. and uh, in my opinion most of the businesses will go only that direction next years or they will not be in the market. And with that uh, being said, we refill our coffees and keep this, uh, the conversation for two more hours. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I, I'm actually having a refill here. Just to close this topic about leadership and skills of uh, next decade. What, what is your estimate, your conclusion? 
say again, I'm not sure I understood the question. About the skills for mm-hmm. a leader in the new decade, what do you think are, if there are any new uh, skills they have to, or characteristics they have to have? I'm not sure. I'm not, it's a good question, Zissi. Let me, let me talk to you like this. I don't think there's going to be a new skill. I think the degree of application of the skills will differ, yes? Because in, norm, in times of peace, you can play on process and authority. In times of change, you can't play on process because there is no process. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if uh, a process, look at me, I changed during this year three times my management processes, three times. And there is, you know, I am a very well organized person. As you know, I had my, my time schedule like at least nine months in advance, okay? Where I'm going to be, what I'm going to do, how everything plays out. And I, I run business like this. There is nothing or few things that's more frustrating to me as a, as a manager in that sense that I need to change my calendar every other week, you know, and it happened to me so much this year, so frustrating. But it's the display of which of these attributes or qualities are going to, to engage more as percentage of we. And if there is one that I will put my mind on, will be curiosity intellectual curiosity okay it's look i i am an old wolf and uh, and i didn't care much about uh, uh, tiktok i you know because i thought it's for something else but you you need to keep options open and curiosity because again and try and try new things Yes. If you don't try, if you don't experiment, you you have no idea of what is happening, you know? Yes. You are only yes. theoretical. I mean, uh, you have, if you want to be in the market, you have to try everything. You have mm-hmm. to follow where the market is going. If it's going in TikTok, then you go to TikTok. If it's going to, I don't know, WordPress, you go to WordPress. Or Here, Here's the thing. I think I, I give you, I, I, I will do one better. If you are curious, you may follow the market or you might, might actually lead the market, but it only starts with curiosity. Yes, because I'm sure there, there must have been one person in our business, in LR, that tried first TikTok. Had to, you know, had to. Uh, and that it's coming out from curiosity. It's not even about I'm going to follow some something that somebody else tried and may or may not work. You see what I mean? And I don't know, you know, seven years ago, we were saying, well, Instagram is the next Facebook, okay? Mm-hmm. And I don't know what's the next Instagram. And I don't know whether it does TikTok. I don't know what's the next TikTok. I don't know what's the next YouTube. I don't know. But you got to stay agile and curious, you know? So I, I'm not telling people to spend their nights, uh, you know, online, because it's not at all what I'm saying. You need to stay focused to what's your core. And then within that, with curiosity, you need to address this I think three fundamental questions. How do I generate leads? How do I convert leads? How do I, I keep them satisfied through uh, a re- activation? Yes, repurchase uh, e- e- evolution. Sebastian, uh, during this last part of the conversation, I want to, I, rem- I, rem- I, rem- I remember something and I would like to correct it. It's not following the market, mm-hmm. observing the market because if you are following yes sure you are not you cannot lead maybe it's uh-huh. difficult to lead but if you are observing mm-hmm. it's very possible to lead absolutely and if you read if you read early enough a trend then you you join you uh, you join the current before before the crowd does yeah. you are in crowd. yeah so i'm coming to one of my favorite Uh, topics, uh, which is female leadership and female entrepreneurship. You know that I have a special drive for supporting women. Other women thrive in our business and talk about female leadership. And as we have discussed about it in the past, in any given opportunity, and I have to say in public Uh, that your choices have shown that you don't see gender 
as a barrier as to whom succeeds in high level leadership roles. Women in our business would love to hear uh, your perspective. Could you tell us a few things about our industry and how you see women thrive here? And um, I know you talk and work with many women leaders in your region. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, uh, thanks for the question, Bias Gary. You know that this is a subject that I'm particularly fond of. Um, you are right. I, I never, never did, never will treat gender as a qualifier. It's just not a qualifier to me. You know, the, the same qualifiers to me are the same talents, skills, reasons, values. Um, that's it. So for as long as you think that gender is not a qualifier, I, I think that's already the right starting point. Hmm? Um, secondly, there are so many skills, quite frankly, I mean, as monkeys, men, you know, we, we have certain, uh, certain powers and certain, certain skill sets and certain, you know, attributes. But I think women, in, more often than not, they bring something extra to the table that we naturally, we are not naturally, again, uh, um, equipped. Okay. Now we can develop um, and we can get better. But I think in certain things, women are just naturally uh, better equipped. So, you know, you know, leadership is parenthood, in my opinion. And I think there are great many fathers out there. But I think there are a lot better mothers out there. And if you are looking from this perspective, you would say that uh, I see zero reasons why a lady will be uh, less qualified uh, than a man. As a matter of fact, if you are looking, uh, if you are following this trail, one would say perhaps the opposite even. Um, but again, I don't think it's gender-based, it's skill, talent, values-based. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm very lucky to, to have been uh, you know, hiring very many women country, country general managers or uh, high leadership positions. Um, and very successful for that matter and commanding a great, great respect and authority. Uh, of uh, of the years within the within the industry i think we are a bit more blessed because our industry has what is our industry at the core i think you might have heard saying this in one of my uh, my speeches my my in my lectures during some social selling uh, social distancing has a critical word in that and that's social you know uh, and society on its own and everything social women are better simply better skill in social interactions we the monkeys okay yeah we interact when we want but we don't do it almost naturally ladies like to be social okay perhaps even more so than the men we are you know let's do things the grumpy thing come back from home you know but ladies engage and this level of engagement, I think, is what makes our business uniquely fit for women entrepreneurs. Because you find, just look at a few attributes. Women don't get enough recognition. And let's face it, there, we still live, yes, it's changing, but I don't think it's changing nowhere, nowhere near fast enough. This is still a highly patriarchal, not to say misogynistic, uh, particularly business world. I think culturally too, but let's stick to the business world. Women need recognition. Well, if you don't find recognition in our industry, I'm not sure where you're going to find it. Women need, uh, women need equal career opportunity. Hello. You know, this is not somebody who promotes you. You know, in, in a normal corporate place, somebody promotes you and then you're going to start, will I choose you? Will I choose you? Okay. In our business, you self-promote yourself. That's it. You don't need Zizio Paraskevi or myself for that matter to promote you uh, as a networker. You promote yourself. Exactly. Therefore, you, you are really in front of a mirror. You want recognition? You're going to get it, baby. You want to grow through your career? You want promotion? What are you waiting for? You know? Do you want independence? Hey, you know, I'm here. I'm here to support you. 
uh, you are in business uh, for yourself, but not by yourself, but it's your business. I'm going to support you. I'm going to give you my know-how. You put your effort and talent. I give you my know-how and process. Um, you know, you look for self-esteem. What more self-esteem can you have uh, uh, than being in the spotlight, okay, giving a lecture to fellow beings that after one, two, ten years, you have reached level of success that you have never imagined. I'll give you an example. One of our top leaders in Russia, she's brilliant. She is, she is uh, you know, very powerful, but she was born in a tiny village in the, in the middle of Uzbekistan, of all places, okay? So basically, her, her opportunity is so limited that it's, it's unfunny. So then she promotes herself to go to, Kazakh, uh, to, to Kyrgyzstan. So you understand how bad that place to go to Kyrgyzstan, and she felt as a lifestyle promotion. She, uh, she gets lucky. You know, this was her fate. We got lucky. She got lucky that she became a partner. Now she is uh, she is uh, platinum. She just got married. Uh, she is pregnant. She moved to Moscow. Now she moved to Sochi because she can afford it. She's having the life, uh, the, the 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 days of her lifetime, and she keeps on saying, you know, uh, she graduated. Uh, chemistry in Moscow, and she keeps on saying, I was no one with zero perspective as a young girl in a village in Uzbekistan. I am here. If I did it, excuse me, I, I, I can't imagine better platforms for a woman uh, to, uh, uh, to generally affirm herself than uh, our business, our industry by, by extent. And this is the beauty. It's not different for a man, <laughs> you know. It's generally not different for uh, for a man. Skill, competence, what you put in, what this is what you get out. Yes, it is no luck. You know what I mean? There is no luck. There, we remove the chauvinism, and I think people know that I'm very hard on any you know mistreatments uh, around that. So yeah, a great question, uh, Baraskeri. In the labor market, it is often uh, talked about the glass ceiling. You mentioned that in different uh, wording. And uh, organizations around the globe are designing, still designing um, actions to eliminate these phenomena. What do you see in our industry? And could this be the major reasons a woman has to take into serious consideration our business model? This is an opportunity. End of. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you are frustrated by the, the ways of the world, particularly the corporate ways of the world, well, this is the most valid platform, as I said. But platform, you see... I think maybe maybe that will take us into a different thing because we provide an income and a platform. So to think about it. So I think that goes both for men and women. But now that we are referring uh, to, to the beautiful gender, it's a platform of self-affirmation and it's a business that pays tremendously well. And you can go all the way through. I mean, all the way through. And, uh, and you will feel... You see... In, on all the stages I have been, on all the uh, title recognitions I have done, I can promise you one thing. Never heard a crowd applauding less for a successful woman than a, for a successful true, man. True, true. True. I never thought about it, but never heard it. You know, we, uh, we applaud success at its merit, irrespective whether... Uh, yeah, whether it's a man or, or a woman. Hmm? Just for those who have no insider uh, view of our industry, I wanted to uh, hear about your perspective and how you see things. Uh, you see our children here. <laughs> yeah. I told them that, uh, you know, the only reason to open the door is if we catch fire and see how... Uh, <laughs> I am seeing, I actually am seeing them for a long time. I think I've seen them way before you realize they are there. And I was like, look at them. <laughs> it's like we are having a... a, a 
a fear, fear, yeah. fear movie, you know. It's a, it's a party, people. It's a party. Yes, yes, yes. Suddenly, okay. uh, all our moments are like a party. So, okay. Let's go back in our field a bit. I mean, in our industry and uh, speak about the challenges you think that we will face the next three to five years as a market, as an industry? One challenge, and quite possibly the only challenge I see, a challenge that is well well addressed and will take, uh, will take some time uh, to fix it, but it's, we are on the way of addressing it. I think the customer will become spoiled for choice of service. Mm-hmm. So to me, the service, the service proposition is the critical bit. You know, um, I think we are having ways to go as an industry, okay? Um, and I believe some are doing better than others. We are the, some of those that we are doing better than others, uh, but we still have much to, to improve. So I, I would really imagine that will be the service because as people move more and more online. Just to give you an idea, uh, I just uh, heard yesterday that in Germany, yesterday, DHL had 9.5 million parcels yesterday in their hands in transit in Germany alone. 1.5 million of them, they were they were seriously delayed. They were backlogged, and then they they announced that they are not taking new business. Mm-hmm. So it's clear that it didn't even think about the the mega global giant that DHL is, they also hit the bottom. Or uh, they, yeah. they hit the uh, Exactly. Because people have changed their habits, their purchasing habits. Uh, look no further to us in Athens, yes. Uh, we, need, we need to continue to innovate because uh, our shop, uh, if it's closed for all the right reasons, yes. And will be open, you know, whenever the lockdown will be over. But that's not going to be uh, tomorrow or the day after. Hmm? Uh, so I, I imagine that our industry, not only our, I think our industry, it's, it's better because, again, the social element to it. And because of the social element to it, we are able to better manage the expectations of customers. Okay. Um, but that would be the one uh, I would be having a big guy uh, on it, uh, Zissi, the service proposition. In my, in my opinion, the only businesses that will survive in the future will be only the businesses who will have the ability to reach direct to the consumer. Uh, even if we have the shops, the shop uh, model, let's say, like shops, the experience will be totally different mm-hmm. and the product will continue uh, only to be delivered on the consumer. And that companies will rise and go big, and also we'll see very big companies to go down. That mm-hmm. will not apply. I mean, you know, the, the new philosophy. For sure, I have two points here uh, to you. Uh, you know, Paul Smith, the the British uh, uh, clothier, the uh, the British uh, designer. Um, they have many shops, many brick and mortar shops around the world. But he was very clear for many a year back that his biggest shop. Was the uh, uh, was the web shop, so such visionaries they understood, and he's for 50 years, 50 years uh, this year in the business, and you know he would be into his 70s, and he understood many oh, years already that his biggest shop will be the web shop way before the uh, Paul Smith web shop was uh, was cashing in. The other thing I want to bring here is this is something that I said, you know, I, I think just like you, this is. Many of my friends ask me, uh, not and not only friends, but also partners uh, 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 across the, the, the decades, really, I mean, the industry, 27 years now, 28 years, and I was asked, is this still a viable model? I was asked this as a kid in Romania, is this still a viable model? Because malls open, and now I'm talking about yeah, yeah. Uh, early 90s, you know, when there was nothing, so it was very easy to do this, yes? Yep, yep. Uh, back day in Romania, you could only buy fragrance, uh, say from uh, on a on a, on a duty free. Yes. yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, now you know. 
So malls are open. Will you still be relevant? It's like, yes. Uh, and then hypermarkets open. Do you think you are still going to be relevant? We are still growing. Okay. Malls are empty. Malls need to, ch they check their compass. Mal malls are, I think mal malls nowadays is basically a walking ground because there is shop. I mean, you go mostly, uh, you, if you're looking uh, at malls without a, 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 a Cineplex in, in them, they are all but empty. Yeah. So people that go there for other things such as entertainment and maybe they will shop they will stop into a shop or a window shopping or whatnot. So, and then the online platform uh, started and said, will it, are you still relevant? We are here and kicking and growing more than before. So why? And I couldn't agree with you. This is, that's why I brought these two little examples next to, because the social element, that's one. But also if you are seeing as a mega trend, people move away from an emotional purchase to a specialized purchase. And if you see the now, the, there was, I think throughout 80s and 90s, uh, there was a um, mega consolidation. And now you see it's again a deconsolidation because private labels, they, they want more and more detailed and refined service and product. And then people want expertise. So talking about and what this is what we offer our, our our sales force our partners this is what they offer you know they offer a personalized expertise and yes you can do that with an app sure you can do but if you do it with a human and an app i'm pretty sure that's, i know uh, who is winning yeah the experience at the end wins yeah experience and expertise yes of course of course lr Next five years, how you see LR next five years? How you see our company? I, I was excited seven years ago. I think I'm even more excited now. If we manage to grow to this fucked up here into a way that is generally, I don't mean words, spectacular, with the plans we have for next year, you tell me where we're going to go. I mean, this is a force of good this the our company that that we like uh, we love so much i see greatness quite frankly excitement and greatness uh, is in front of us and and always with that sense of community purpose Pascali, community purpose i i never or rarely skip a lecture to remind our leaders that we serve a purpose to improve the lives the well-being of our communities. And if that is not something wonderful, I don't know what that is, what else is. 100%. I would like to wish you a happy new year, full of uh, health and clarity, and um, to be here with us uh, as uh, present as you have done in the past. Well, I, I return the wishes for us, Kevin, uh, Zissi, and to your wonderful two uh, little <laughs> monsters behind you there. <laughs> like worms they are. <laughs> oh, goodness mine, goodness mine. Uh, we, wow. we have a very clean uh, floor we, after yeah, an I hour. Think, or... <laughs> I think you, you have it now. So uh, thanks for the wishes, and I return them. Wish you a very happy holidays. Uh, a great uh, New Year's, and of course, as always, we stay close, we stay in touch, yes, as yes. we are working for the same goal. Yes, and thank you very much for the opportunity, because it's the first time that we have the chance to speak with the vice president of the company in public for things that matters today. My pleasure, my pleasure. I salute you. I wish you a great, uh, yes, I, I wish you a great everything, okay? <laughs> Stay, uh, stay healthy, and even more importantly, stay sane. Thank you very much.